when we talk about the state of things, it's rarely an exciting topic. The state of the union, the state of affairs, the state of the economy, it's all kind of depressing because to discuss the state of things is to talk about the situation, condition, circumstances, or predicament. And often to talk about these things is to talk about what needs to be fixed. But this last year was a great year for Evergreen. The state of the church is something we're actually really excited to share with you. Great things happened in 2013 and the Lord really moved. We've asked some of the fellow Evergreeners who are closely involved with these things to share a little bit more with you. So I've been serving in the church for almost 10 years now. I've started when I was really young. Uh, my parents were the ones that uh, were there at church at six in the morning and left uh, late afternoon. This was back when we were in the high school. And I just started right up as soon as I was old enough, uh, serving in the setup and takedown ministry, uh, tech and discovery years, and then playing guitar about the time that uh, we got this building. Um, but it just didn't seem fulfilling. It just didn't seem like God was using me like he was using other people around me. It had been, it's been about 10 years that I've been serving in the church and I just didn't get it. I didn't understand why what God wasn't using me as much as he was using those around me. So as I was trying to figure out why I felt like God wasn't using me, uh, I heard a message by Rory Whitney out of Faith Walkers, and he said that the service is the overflow of love and devotion. And I could see that in those people around me, that whenever they served, it was because they loved people, and they were devoted to investing in them. Um, it says in 1 Corinthians 13.3, it says that if I give all I possess to the poor and give over to hardship, um, but do not have love, I gain nothing. If I don't love the people in this church, if I'm not devoted to them, it doesn't matter how many times I serve in the booth, it doesn't matter how many times I play guitar, it doesn't matter how many service projects I go on. If I don't love people, if I'm not devoted to them, if I'm not investing in their lives, it means nothing. I might as well just stay home and waste my time. So now when I serve in the church, it's not just an attempt to show off my technical skills, to show off what licks I can do on my guitar, to show off cool things I can do with my truck. It's not that. It is an attempt to invest in people's lives and show them Christ's love through my actions. In 2013, I decided that I wanted to grow in my faith. I had a habit of coming up with ideas of ways to serve Him, things I should do and then running ahead of him and saying, oh, by the way, God, come along with me. But this year, I wanted to make sure that whatever I did, it was from him and not from something that I decided to do. So, early in the year, 2013, they mentioned about mission trips. I said, God, that can't be your will for me to grow in my faith by going on a mission trip, but God, kept reminding me. I kept hearing people talk about it. And I thought, oh, I promised God that I would listen and obey. And I wanted to grow in my faith. So I need to go on a mission trip. In Honduras, I had the opportunity to experience all the fears that I was afraid of. I had trouble sleeping. I got sick, I got overwhelmed with the language, and yet I saw God use every single fear to show me He was with me and to really have people in Honduras and my team minister to me and show me love. But it really spoke to me that God was with me at each and every moment during that trip. And the exciting thing about going on a mission trip for me was I absolutely could not do any of it in my own strength. I knew it was totally God that took me every step of the way. And that is such a freeing, exciting thing to see God work in your lives like that. Samaritan Ministries is a result of hearing God's word spoke from the pulpit and then seeking to put it into action. The focus of the ministry is to bring Evergreen closer to the model of the early church. Evergreen already does a great job with reaching the needs of people with their small groups, but this ministry comes in to meet 
that to bridge that gap with those things that um, the small groups can't do. For example, perhaps someone has a um, need for meals, but well, we can come alongside and provide the money to buy supplies, and that small group can use those supplies, those groceries to make meals. And I think through Samaritan Ministries, we're able to match those people that have best to give to those people who are in need, uh, whether it be giving of your time, giving of your talent, or financial gifts. And I think that's um, what it's all about, is um, sharing so that nobody is in need. I may be lacking in social skills, but the, but the Lord is changing my heart. I have a heart for those that are lost, a heart for those that are grieving, a heart for those that uh, are suffering. I just uh, trying to use what I have in order to comfort those people and strengthen the church. This is about make, uh, building up the church so that the church can be strong, so the church can go out and reach the lost. I know for myself, one of the most encouraging things that happened over the course of 2013 was getting to be involved in the outreach ministry at the trailer park. Um, it was just really unique how it all came together and it was just apparent that everyone was called to different things in it. And before that had happened, it had been really easy for me to kind of be isolated in the areas I was serving. Um, it was pretty task oriented, it was, you know, go. Um, and discovery years like teach the kids and like that was great but I didn't necessarily get to interact with other people as members of a body and then the outreach ministry was coming together and the opportunity came to basically be Christ with skin on to the trailer park that's close to us but there was no way that anyone could do that by themselves and it was sweet to see like how the Lord uniquely prepared me for my part but I had a part of it and it was sweet to just get emails and uh, have people call up and be like you know I really felt led to put together a scavenger hunt for the kids or I really felt led to just you know bring nail polish like things that I wouldn't have considered on my own um, the Lord just brought everyone together and it was very clear that this wasn't anybody's project this wasn't anything that anyone was really like in charge of or put together but God put it together and he put people like in charge of like guiding it along but he had it and he got the glory for it it was just really great to see different people coming together from sometimes like entire lifetimes that had been building into being a part of this moment and just getting to have all of those talents and all of those skills to come together and really work the same way that a body works together. It was miraculous and one of the most beautiful things I've really seen this year. In closing, the state of the church is progression. We've been changing, growing, and reaching out. We've grown in dedication to searching out ways to be Christ's body to those in our church family, as well as the community around us. By God's grace, we've been able to seize these opportunities and watch God move. The best part of all of this is that we've been doing this together as a body, as a family, as the church.